this, this afternoon, and it's, it's true. Um, sometimes people measure everything by, uh, by quantity. That's not always a good thing to do. Uh, quite often, uh, quality is much more important than quantity. And so tonight we have great quantity here and great spirit. And so I'm happy to have you with us this evening as we open this exhibit. And I thank especially Dr. Rowling for working with the embassy to make all of this happen. I'm also grateful to um, Ms. Rita Kukuskita, the culture, uh, I, I'm not good at that, I, I tried, but you, 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 you helped me. Um, culture and diaspora counselor at the embassy of Lithuania and uh, Mr. Arvedas Barduskas, the active member of the Lithuanian American community who witnessed the Chronicles journey in the West. We're happy to have all of you with us this afternoon, Lithuanian Americans and any visitor or guest who's here. The Christianization of Lithuania occurred more than 600 years ago. The Catholic Church has been the major denomination in that country. And in the 20th century, the Catholic Church in Lithuania was the bulwark against communism. This exhibit, the Chronicle of the Catholic Church in Lithuania, is an observance of the 50th anniversary of the first publication of this underground Catholic newspaper, which served to sustain the faith and the faithful during the communist suppression. The publication of the Chronicle and its distribution processes were a closely guarded secret, one that the KGB was never able to crack. The Chronicle did exactly what its name implied. It chronicled, in detail, the persecution, the harassment, even death of those who resisted the Soviet plan of subjugation. Spurred onward by the election of Pope John Paul II, the Chronicle fought for believers' rights and became the national memory documenting the trials and the hardships from 1944 into the 1960s, publishing the names of those murdered, the dissidents arrested and sent to the Gulag, and those in exile. Among the exile was Bishop Vincent Brieskis of Countess Lithuania, who found refuge in Chicago. Through his leadership, the chapel of Relief Sluva here in the Great Church came to be. In 1966, the chapel was blessed and dedicated as with so many of the chapels in the National Shrine, the Lithuanian chapel speaks of the faith and the perseverance of the Lithuanian people. It is a constant reminder of the power of prayer and the strength of faith. It served as a source of spiritual support for the persecuted in Lithuania. The National Shrine is particularly pleased to host this exhibit on the 50th anniversary of the Chronicle of the Catholic Church in Lithuania. It is a reminder of the faith so precious to many of the pilgrims who come to this church and who have shared their devotion to Our Lady with the church in America. Today, as we see freedom being challenged once again in Ukraine, the observance of this 50th anniversary of the Chronicle of the Catholic Church in Lithuania is even more important. It is a celebration of truth for as St. John writes in his gospel, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Thank you for sharing this exhibit with us. Have a good evening. May God bless you, and our lady always protect you. Thank you, Monsignor Rossi. I thought you did very well with the names. <laughs> And now we will have Ms. Rita Kukuskita, who will come and uh, give us a little, uh, she did her uh, master, or your, your uh, thesis on the Chronicles. So I, I'm sure she has some insights to share with us this evening. So please. Thank you. On behalf of the Embassy of Lithuania, I would like to express our gratitude to Monsignor Rossi for welcoming us in this beautiful shrine. And also, we would, we would like to sincerely thank uh, Dr. Rowling for her efforts and everyone who helped um, uh, 
the exhibition to be open today here for the public. Thank you all. Um, this exhibition tells a thrilling story about successful peaceful resistance uh, to oppression. It is the story about the origins, production and distribution of an underground publication during the oppressive Soviet regime. The first issue of the Chronicle was published in 1972 when the perestroika was still years ahead and the prospects of freedom seemed very unlikely. Some is that, which is the word to uh, describe uh, an underground publication in Soviet Union, was one of the most persecuted activities in the post-Stalinist era. There were many publications who appeared all over Soviet Union, but the regular lifespan of such publication was two to three years. Um, because um, KGB was very well equipped in dismantling these networks of dissent and harshly persecuting everyone who uh, were involved. And yet the Chronicle defied all odds for 17 years uh, until the breakdown of the regime without ever missing an issue and all these chronics Chronicle um, issues reached the West, they were translated into English and distributed widely in the free world. Uh, KGB repeatedly tried and failed to stop this voice of truth echoing in the West about the persecutions of religious freedom and abuses of human rights in Lithuania. Uh, the success of the Chronicle lies in a dedicated network of people who collected and verified information, published and distributed the issues despite the extreme danger. Many of them were caught and imprisoned in gulags and deported to Siberia. Uh, the main reason the Chronicle was, had such a strong presence in the West is um, Lithuanian American community, of course. Um, these people bravely smuggled uh, the issues from Lithuania to the West. They fundraised, translated and published this uh, publication here in the free world. Um, and they made sure that every library, every congressman um, received the latest issue about what is actually happening in Lithuania. A couple of weeks ago, uh, Washington DC opened its um, long-awaited Victims of Communism Museum here in Washington and among other items, Lithuania donated printed chronicle as well as um, negative who was um, confiscated by the KGB. Uh, as our nation's contribution to the collection of this museum. And the Parliament of Lithuania dedicated 2022 to the 50th anniversary of the Chronicle. Uh, today we see that we need to record and share the truth. Uh, the need to share and record the truth is as important as ever. Um, and the main lesson of the Chronicle is that even in the darkest hour of oppression, the fight for truth is never hopeless. So I sincerely thank everyone who um, are here tonight and um, I wish you a pleasant evening. And I would like to introduce uh, Arvdas Barzdukas, uh, who will also say a little word. Uh, thank you, Rita. I'd like to tell Monsignor one little, maybe not well-known uh, thing about the shrine. When Khrushchev eased the conditions in Soviet Union somewhat, a number of so-called interns came to the United States to study on exchange programs. And of course, they found us, and we um, would meet them. And the first place where we brought them was here. Their eyes popped. They couldn't believe it. How could such a chapel be in the United States Capitol? They were just absolutely amazed. Every single one of them visited and enjoyed it. <clears throat> um, I have to say, uh, I, I have to apologize, but I'm pinch-hitting for Victor Asnakas, 
uh, who was personally much more involved with the Chronicle here in the United States. Uh, but Victor is ill and he couldn't come. So my good friend Rita called me yesterday afternoon and she said, could you please come and say a few words? There were about people, she wanted me to talk about people who were involved with the Chronicle here in, in this country. Uh, there were many of those people, but I just want to mention uh, two who stand out in my memory. Uh, one of them was a priest, Father Kazimieras Pugavichus. I met Father Pugavichus in the mid-50s at a Lithuanian youth camp <clears throat> which was in, on the shore of, uh, of uh, Chesapeake Bay near Annapolis. Uh, Father Pugavichus was just ordained and uh, if there was one thing that he was really interested and was to improve his Lithuanian language, which was relatively meager at that time. Uh, then when my wife and I settled here in Washington, we became good friends. He christened all three of our children. Uh, he and I attended a cursillo in Baltimore, and he was frequent guest at our house for uh, interesting and intense discussions. Father Pugavich has got a scholarship to study at the Catholic University here and got his BA degree and then master's in philosophy in 1949. He was ordained a uh, priest in 1953 and in addition to working uh, as a parish priest for some five years, Bugavichus wrote a weekly column, <coughs> excuse me, for the Baltimore Diocesan paper, The Catholic Review. Prophetically, preparing his readers for the changes that came some 10 years later at Vatican II. Concerned with uh, Catholic social action, he served as chaplain for the Young Christian Workers Organization in Baltimore as chaplain for the Lithuanian Catholic Youth Association at Aetis, <clears throat> as well as the assistant director of Family Life Bureau of the diocese. Then in 1965, Cardinal Lawrence Sheehan appointed Father Pugavichus to be the director of radio and television for the diocese. And that was the first such appointment in the entire United States. Uh, he took some classes at uh, New, uh, New York University in, in TV production, TV and radio production. And uh, in addition to several other positions he held at the Baltimore Catholic community, he had that director's job for some five years. <clears throat> he co-founded uh, Ecomedia, an interfaith broadcasting office, started Maryland uh, Citizens Coalition for Cable Communications, and also served as president of the Catholic Broadcasters Association. He produced over a thousand radio and television programs. Among them, a documentary of the chapel here at the shrine, and several programs based on material, uh, material from the Chronicles. Uh, in addition to all that, Father Pugavich has helped take care of his disabled brother. Then, as is one of his co-workers, Marian Skabekis, keenly observed, Father Casimir heard what Jesus said in Matthew 19, 21, about selling everything and following him. 
except that Father Bulgarish didn't have much to sell. <laughs> Abandoning uh, a promising and exciting career in the hierarchy, he asked for a leave of absence from his diocesan jobs <coughs> and assumed full-time duties organizing the Lithuanian American Catholic Services in New York, which later became the Lithuanian Catholic Religious Aid, which he headed for 17 years. And that's where the Chronicle comes in. When the Chronicle in Occupied Lithuania was started, one goal of its authors was to somehow get, it, get the publication out and disseminated in the West. Lithuanian Catholic Religious Aid had developed some contacts with uh, some people in the church in Lithuania. The church was not prohibited in occupied Lithuania. It was only denigrated and disparaged. Assisting the church in Lithuania was the main purpose of the Lithuanian organization which Father Pugavich is headed. Through those contacts, especially with the help of dissidents like Sergei Kovalev and others in Moscow, the publication, often on microfilm, hidden in some benign souvenir, was smuggled out to the side of the Iron Curtain. Father Pugavishus immediately took on the job of translating and publishing the Chronicles in the United States through the auspices of the Lithuanian Catholic Priests Alliance and later through the Lithuanian Catholic Church Chronicle Publishing Alliance, which he had established. He translated some of the volumes himself and then found translators for others. It should be noted but that, but that by that time, Father Pugavich spoke, spoke fluent Lithuanian. The American Catholic Church, <coughs> through the Lithuanian Catholic Religious Aid, which was also headed by Father Pugavich, supported that work. Then, when Lithuania needed it the most, during the days of Saivides and rebirth, Father Pugavichus founded the Lithuanian Information Center in New York with a branch here in Washington, which was headed by Dr. Asnakas. Ginte Damushis, <coughs> later the Lithuanian ambassador to Vienna and other, a couple other Western capitals, headed the office in New York. An interesting tidbit, drawing on, the, on their experience with the Chronicle, the center people came up with a clever idea of sending, mostly faxing in those days, the news they received from Lithuania to the European and American <coughs> news agencies and newspaper bureaus in Moscow. Disseminate, disseminating it from there, the events in Lithuania received immediate attention, much more so than the news generated from a single room, ninth floor, tiny office on 15th Street Northwest. Uh, Michael Dobbs, then the Washington Post bureau chief in Moscow, who was in Vilnius on the fateful days of uh, January 1991, for his help to Lithuania, later was given an award at the Lith Lithuanian Embassy here. Father Pugavichus <coughs> was awarded the Grand Duke Gediminas Order by the Lithuanian government posthumously. He was always the symbol of courage and truth, said Roland Skaczynskas later uh, the Lithuanian ambassador in Washington. For a couple of years, Father Pugavichus went back to Lithuania and served as a, as a parish priest at the Church of the Blessed Jurgis Matulaitis in Vilnius, 
and he created quite a stir when after mass he would go to the back of the church and greet people that never happened before as much as Father Pugavicius took on the leadership positions in his diocesan duties, he was very much a background person in Lithuanian circles. The current Lithuanian Catholic Religious Aid website barely mentions him once as having helped. He was a very unpretentious person, he remembers when Senior Arthur Bastras the pastor of the former Lithuanian St. Alphonsus Church in downtown Baltimore. <clears throat> he did what he did because he knew it had to be done. Father Pugavicius died at the age of 71 on February 29, 2000, and was laid to rest from St. Alphonsus Church, where he served as an assistant pastor. Cardinal Sheehan said the fair mass. Another person who was heavily involved in translating and publishing the Chronicle, and who should be mentioned here, was Professor Thomas Remakis in Chicago. <clears throat> After receiving his PhD at the University of Illinois, he was the head of the political science department at a small Calumet College of St. Joseph, Joseph in Indiana. He faithfully collected and published an annual report called The Violation of Human Rights in Soviet-Occupied Lithuania. At least eight volumes of that uh, compilation were printed. In his well-documented 680-page uh, book, Opposition to Soviet Rule in Lithuania, 1945 to 1980, he devotes almost a quarter of the book, 164 pages, to the information and analysis of the material gathered from the Chronicle. That's probably the most comprehensive and in-depth study of the importance and the impact that the Chronicle of the Chronicle that is available. The people who created, wrote, edited, and published the Chronicle of the Catholic Church of Lithuania, as well as those who made it available and disseminated it here in the West, were an unusual breed, forgetting themselves and devoting their life to their faith. A nun, Sister Niolia Sadunaite, in her final statement at her trial, said she didn't need an attorney because she had done nothing wrong. She said she was being tried for the love of truth and the love of her fellow human beings. She finished her final word with a poem that she said was born in prison. The harder the road you have to tread, the more intense the life you lead. With resolve of ju for justice, we must burn to conquer evil against all odds and deed. And no greater <coughs> happiness can be felt than to resolve to die for man. Then a bright feast will pervade your soul beyond all prison and glacial land. That about says it all. Thank you.
Mr. Barzdukas, thank you so much for an insightful reflection and first person uh, expression of the Chronicle. Through the generosity of the Lithuanian Embassy, we have some delightful Lithuanian uh, culinary delights. So please come enjoy, speak, and view. Thank you for coming. <laughs>